In this video, we're just going to look at how the budgetary policy can be used to target living standards and efficiency more generally, as opposed to targeting just specifically one of the goals. Um, the overall objective of the budget is to try and improve our living standards and achieve a more efficient allocation of resources. So even all the other policies that related to all the other goals still have the idea of trying to boost living standards in the long term. They might have other intermediate goals, for example, growth and full employment, but they're all trying to achieve improvement in living standards in the future, regardless of what they're doing. So there are a host of budgetary policies that are actually not targeted at one of the goal, and they're more focused at actually trying to allocate resources to their most efficient use, and often relate to preventing market failures. So taxing cigarettes and things like that, they can affect equity, but their main target is to try and achieve a more efficient allocation of resources. Um, so these policies are including things like providing public goods. They go into that category. Um, basically trying to stop the power of monopolies, so reducing the amount of power that the monopolies are allowed to have. Um, that might be a carbon tax to improve environmental conditions, alcohol taxes, so regressive excise taxes on um, alcohol to try and avoid, reduce our spending on alcohol and the negative externalities associated with that tobacco excise taxes, spending on research and development. Um, the Australian Competition Consumer Commission, so putting funds towards that so they can try and um, achieve a more competitive landscape for businesses. Um, and then spending towards health and things like that as well in the future, and education. Um, examples from previous budgets, so alcohol taxes and excise taxes on tobacco, which are designed to reduce negative externality to achieve a more efficient allocation of resources. Spending towards public goods, um, money spent towards disability care, so to help people with particular disabilities. Uh, last year they spent $226 million to try and combat um, cancer initiatives, so to try and help people to find a cure for cancer and help people with um, that already have the disease. Um, subsidies to promote certain products, so subsidies towards installing solar panels, water tanks, anything that's going to help um, us in the future by reducing the incidence of negative externalities. Um, also, funding for bodies to promote competition is also included within the budget as well. So giving money to the ACCC and ASIC to try and um, encourage competition, which will lead to increased efficiency. So examples from this year's budget, Defence. Defence will get $32.3 billion, sorry, um, which will be based mainly around trying to build naval ships buildings, uh, sorry, na na naval ships, um, which will also include the construction of submarines um, which will patrol around South Australia and Western Australia, so around the border. So basically spending a lot of money on submarines. Um, this, there's also $730 million for what we call a Next Generation Technologies Fund, which is basically just trying to come up with um, inventions for our armed forces to make them more, to make them safer and more innovative. But basically the defence spending is mainly built around the naval ships and basically built around the new submarines that are going to patrol South Australia and Western Australia. Um, security, they're going to spend $195 million to try and improve cyber security. Um, that includes $195 million towards cyber safety. Um, $47 million will go towards basically scaring people into committing fraud and other types of cyber, cyber problems. Um, we're by setting up scary sounding organisations basically. Um, and 21.5 million will go towards expanding the computer emergency response team to try and help people that have been involved in any form of cyber crime. Terrorism, they're also spending 5 million towards countering violent extremists, so trying to anyone involved in ISIS or anything um, that is extreme behaviour. 4 million from the Attorney General to work with states and territories to provide community support and services as well. So basically they're putting money towards security, terrorism and defence to try and improve our non-material living standards. Um, this is basically what you need to talk about when you're looking about how we can use the budget to reallocate resources and improve our living standards. So one example of using the budget to reallocate resources and improve living standards would be through the implementation of taxes and subsidies. So taxes, for example, an excise tax on tobacco or cigarettes or petrol, they aim to reduce the incidence of negative externalities by internalising the social costs onto producers and consumers. So the 12.5% increase in the excise tax on cigarettes will mean that there will be less, will increase the price of cigarettes 
and should be more allocatively efficient because resources will shift away from these industries that have negative impacts on third parties and reduce the incidence of passive smoking and associated health costs of lung cancer and things like this. This should improve our non-material living standards because it's improving the health of society. It may hurt the material living standards of society because the cost of smokes will go up, so our purchasing power will be reduced. But by using their taxes and subsidies in this manner, they're able to achieve a more efficient allocation of resources because resources are now being targeted at areas that are going to benefit our living standards as opposed to areas that have negative externalities. So it's about, again, looking back to the price mechanism and negative externalities. Um, another way the government could redirect resources is direct, direct resources to Indigenous Australians, so providing health care and education, for example, remote Aboriginal communities, um, giving them access to qualified teachers, which will help to improve their skills and literacy and therefore make them more efficient and more productive members of the workforce as well. So you don't need to talk about market failures. You can also talk about other ways that the government can use their funds to try and improve education and improve the productivity of our workforce. Um, other things to boost efficiency, the government could put money towards research and development. Um, again, that will help to improve our technical and dynamic efficiency because we'll improve infrastructure and improve our productivity and reduce bottlenecks and travel times and things like this. Um, I won't go into this too much now, but basically the government can also put more money into things like the, the Future Fund, which will help to improve intertemporal efficiency because that will give us savings for the future. Remembering that intertemporal efficiency is not only just about the environment, but being able to support ourselves in the future by having a pool of savings. So putting money towards the Future Fund is also efficient in the sense that they are becoming intertemporally efficient because they're saving more money. Last video, we'll look at the stance of recent...